joining us now to break down these new developments. Dean of Brown University School of Public Health, Dr. Ashish Jha. Dr. Jha, always good to have you. Thanks for being with us this morning. So Moderna says that uh, its vaccine is showing a, a almost 95 percent efficacy rate. Uh, Pfizer says it's about 90 percent uh, effective. The differences between the two vaccines, Dr. Jha, as you understand it, besides the way that they have to be stored, any major differences? Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Uh, no major differences. They're very similar vaccines. I expect they have the same level of effectiveness, sort of in the 90 to 95 percent range. We'll have to see the full data. Uh, the big difference, as you said, Craig, is about uh, storage. And storage is going to make a big difference because there are a lot of places that can't keep vaccines frozen uh, the way the Pfizer vaccine needs to be done. And so some places will get that. Other places will get the Moderna vaccine. All of this is just really good news, though. We'll take the good news on this Monday morning. So with two vaccines already showing promise and more possibly on the way, how is it decided which vaccine you or I will ultimately get? Will we have a choice? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. We don't know. Um, we have not seen any real details of all of this from the federal government. Uh, we should uh, be seeing guidance out of the CDC. Uh, I think in the beginning, what's going to happen is as these vaccines get emergency use authorization, you're going to see the first group of folks, the healthcare workers, the first responders uh, get vaccinated first, uh, probably based on availability. Uh, and as more vaccines come online, there will be uh, potentially differentiation based on data. If some has been tested more in el elderly and other people, other vaccines have not, we're going to have to use those kinds of data points uh, to make determinations. But we're still early, so we just don't know yet. Uh, Dr. Shah, with, with any vaccine, obviously there are immediate possible side effects. You know, you watch the injection site for some redness. But are there concerns about long-term side effects? I mean, this is all being done so quickly. How, how could we even know? Yeah, so with any vaccine or with any therapeutic of any kind, you always want to make sure that safety is sort of the first priority. Uh, so uh, most of the safety signals show up in the first 60 days after vaccination. Uh, I expect that, you know, the first immediate stuff, the, the sore arm, the maybe mild fever, those are going to be pretty common. Uh, but any major complications, we should see them in the first 60 days. That's one of the reasons why we want to look at the data very carefully mm. and make sure that we've got at least a couple of months of follow up in most patients. Uh, long term effects, we're not going to know, but there are very, usually very few long term effects of these things. Most of the big effects are short term. Dr. Jha, Thanksgiving, just a few days away here. College students are returning home. Uh, the CDC recommends limiting small gatherings. Uh, Chicago's mayor, Lori Lightfoot, uh, she says that all Thanksgiving plans there in Chicago should be canceled. Do you agree with that? You know, I, I wish I didn't, but I do. Um, we're in such a bad shape in our country right now. Uh, we always get together with our, uh, I, with my elderly parents. We're not doing that this year, and we're not doing it because I want them around in 2021. Uh, this is just not the time to get households together. We have so much virus in the country, in the community. We've let this get out of control. And unfortunately, it's just not safe to have households getting together right now. So then with that said, you know, the vaccine isn't here yet. Michigan and Washington state are the latest to reimpose restrictions like we saw in the spring. As you mentioned, state home advisories have been issued for Chicago, New Mexico. And, you know, it's interesting because now we're starting to see images of empty store shelves, similar to what we saw at the beginning of the pandemic. Do you think we're headed for another shutdown? I don't. I mean, I think we know so much more than what we did six, eight months ago that we don't need a national shutdown. Um, I think we know there are a lot of things that are safe. Being outdoors is largely safe. Uh, I think schools, especially K through eight, are, we're not seeing outbreaks here. I think those are largely safe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we can be much more nuanced this time around. Uh, of course, I wish we had used the last eight months to build up a terrific testing capacity. We have not. Uh, we're still seeing shortages of protective equipment for doctors and nurses. That's unbelievable eight months later. But we know so much more. We should not need a national lockdown anymore. Dr. Jai, you always give us so, so much good. good information. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you. Well, we always also forget that the Dr. Jha, like a lot of the other doctors that we have on, they're actually like working. And so they have right. to take time to stop and talk to us. And we're so exactly. appreciative. Solid. Yeah. Which yeah. is why you trust what they're, they're saying, saying because they're, they're in it. So yeah. really good information.